In this video, we're going to focus on nucleophilic aromatic substitution reactions. So let's start with a sh very straightforward reaction. So here we have parachloronitrobenzene. And we're going to react it with a nucleophile. Let's use hydroxide. Now we're going to need heat to speed up the reaction. In a nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction, the leaving group, the chlorine atom, is going to be replaced with a nucleophile, in this case hydroxide. Now this reaction works well in the presence of electron withdrawn groups, such as the NO2 group. Now in electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, electron withdrawn groups deactivate the ring towards EAS reactions. But electron withdrawn groups activate the ring in a nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction. These uh, electron withdrawn groups, they work very well if they're placed in the ortho position or in the para position. They're not very effective in the meta position. To draw the product of this reaction, all you need to do is simply replace the chlorine atom with the nucleophile, in this case the hydroxyl group. So now we have paranitrophenol, and that's the product. Now how can we propose a mechanism for this process? Feel free to try it. Go ahead and pause the video and propose a mechanism for that reaction. So I'm going to draw out the nitro group. Whenever oxygen has two bonds, it's going to have two lone pairs. And when it has a single bond, it's going to have three lone pairs and a negative charge. Whenever nitrogen has four bonds, it has a positive formal charge. So now what is hydroxide going to do in this reaction? In a nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction, hydroxide is going to attack the carbon that is attached to the leaving group, that is the Cl. As it does so, it's going to push out the pi electrons to move towards the nitro group. And so these two electrons move here, causing this pi bond to break. Now there's many different resonance forms that we can draw, which I'll go over shortly. So right now we have an intermediate that looks like this. The nitrogen atom still has four bonds, so it still has a positive formal charge. But now both oxygens contain a negative charge. So what can we do at this point? What do you think is going to happen next? At this point, we can kick out the leaving group. So first, let me make some space. Let's move this to this side. So in the next step, the oxygen with the negative charge is going to reform its pi bond, causing this double bond to move back to where it was. And the same is going to happen to this one, expelling the leaving group. The chlorine atom is a better leaving group than the hydroxyl group, and so it's going to be kicked out. And that's a simple way in which you can propose the mechanism of a nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction. So this is the product. But now let's go over the intermediates involved in this reaction. And let's see why it's good to place a nitro group in the ortho and para position. So let's redraw the compound that we had in the beginning. But this time we don't need to draw out the NO2 functional group. Let's use hydroxide again. So hydroxide carries a net negative charge. 
And so when it binds to the ring, it's going to put a negative charge on the ring. So the first resonance structure that we can draw is this one. Well, this is not a resonance structure yet. This is an intermediate. Notice that the negative charge is on the orthocarbon relative to the Cl. Electron withdrawn groups, they can stabilize carbanions. Electron donating groups stabilize carbocations. Whenever you have an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, you're adding an electric valve to the ring. And initially, it's going to create a positive charge. And that's why electron donating groups activate the ring towards electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. It's because electron donating groups can stabilize the carbocation intermediate that's formed. In this reaction, in a nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction, the nucleophile puts a negative charge on the ring, so the presence of electron withdrawn groups can stabilize that negative charge. Now this negative charge, which is currently in the ortho position, can move towards the para position. So now this is a resonance structure of this uh, previous structure. So now the negative charge is on the carbon that has the nitro group. And the nitro group can stabilize that negative charge. So now let's draw another resonance structure. But I'm going to have to redraw this one. Actually, before I do that, I'll get back to this structure. But notice that we can take this negative charge and move it to the ortho position as well. So if you place any electron withdrawn groups in the ortho or para position relative to the Cl, then it will activate the ring towards a nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction. If it's in a meta position, it's not going to be very beneficial. So now we have this intermediate. Now the last intermediate which we can draw, which you've seen already, it's going to look like this. Let's start with this particular resonance form. So now, these electrons can go here, put in the negative charge in the oxygen. And that's how the nitro group can stabilize the carbon ion intermediate. These four resonance structures that we've drew so far, this is known as, I gotta fix something. This double bond should be here. Carbon can't have five bonds. So these four resonance structures, they're known as the uh, Meisenheimer complex. There's another type of nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction that you need to be aware of. And it's the one that's associated with the benzene intermediate. So what is the difference between the Meisenheimer complex and the benzene intermediate? In the Meisenheimer complex, the ring bears a negative charge, as you can see. We have a, a negatively charged carbanion intermediate that can move around in the ring. With the benzene intermediate, there's going to be a triple bond in the benzene ring. But now, how do you know when you're going to get the benzene reaction versus the reaction that goes through the Meisenheimer complex? The key is the presence of an activating group. If you have a nitro group in the ortho or para position, then 
the mechanism is going to proceed via the Meisenheimer complex, which is the one that we've considered. Now, if you don't have, let's say, uh, an electron withdrawn group to activate the ring, and if you have a very powerful nucleophile or base, then the benzene uh, mechanism can occur. So both of these types of reactions are nucleophilic aromatic substitution reactions. But before we go over the benzene reaction, let's work on a few more examples of reactions that proceed via the Meisenheimer complex. Now you already know the mechanisms, so just propose the major product for these examples. So what's going to happen if we add sodium methoxide to this uh, reagent or to this reactant? And here, let's use sodium ethoxide. So predict the major products of the reaction. So all you need to do is identify the nucleophile and replace the halide with it. The sodium is the spexidic ion. The nucleophile is the methoxide ion. So we're going to replace the Br with the OCH3 group. So now we're going to have this product, which is known as ortho nitro anisole. Now all we need to do is replace the halide with the ethoxide nucleophile. And so that's how you can quickly draw the major product of a reaction that proceeds via the Meisenheimer complex. So if you see any powerful electron withdrawing groups, all you need to do is replace the halide with the nucleophile. Now let's say if we have chlorobenzene. and we're going to react it with sodium amide. Notice that there's no powerful electron withdrawn groups. So this reaction will proceed via the benzene uh, intermediate. But we're still going to replace the leaving group with a nucleophile. The nucleophile is the NH2 minus ion. So therefore, the product of this reaction is going to be aniline. So this is still a nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction in which we substitute the leaving group with a nucleophile. Now what if there's a methyl group attached to chlorobenzene? So let's say if we have para-chlorotoluene. What products can we get using sodium amide? Now, it turns out that you don't get just one product, you get two products. In the first product, we're going to replace the chlorine atom with an NH2 group, which looks like the situation above. But there's another product, which will be in the ortho position relative to the Cl you can draw on the left side or on the right side. So we get a mixture of these two products. So clearly, this can't be the same as the Meisenheimer complex reaction. This is completely different. So how do we get these two products? How does the NH2 go on a carbon where the Cl is not located on? So now let's go over the mechanism for this reaction. So let's use chlorobenzene as our example.
the NH2 minus ion is a very, very strong base. And so it's going to take the hydrogen that is adjacent to the carbon with the Cl. And then a triple bond is going to form, and the chloride group is going to leave. So the first step in this process is an elimination step. So right now we have a triple bond. This is known as the benzene intermediate. Now it turns out that the benzene intermediate is not a stable intermediate. The triple bond that's in the benzene ring is highly strained. And the NH2 minus ion can attack either side of the triple bond. It can attack this side, or it can attack this side, giving us the two different products that we saw. So if it attacks the side with the chlorine atom, the triple bond is going to break, and it's going to put a negative charge on the ring. So here is the NH2 group. Here is the negative charge. And we have all three triple bonds inside the ring. So now the negative charge is going to grab a hydrogen from ammonia. By the way, the reagents are NaNH2 in NH3. NH3 is a solvent. So once it grabs the hydrogen from NH3, this is going to produce NH2 minus again. So now we have aniline. So that's the mechanism for the nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction that proceeds via the benzene intermediate. So remember, anytime you're dealing with the benzene reaction, you can't have any powerful electron withdrawing groups. You can have electron donating groups like a methyl group or an isopropyl group, but if there's any electron withdrawn groups, particularly strong ones, then the reaction is going to proceed via the Meisenheimer complex, which is an addition elimination reaction. In the first step, you add the nucleophile, and in the second step, you remove the leaving group. With the benzene reaction, it's an elimination addition reaction. You remove the leaving group first, and then you add the nucleophile later. So here's a question for you. What are the products of this reaction? Now be careful with this one. It turns out that there's three products. You could form the triple bond on the right side, or you can form it on the left side. So therefore, the NH2 ion could attack the triple bond here, here, or here. In the last example, where we didn't have the isopropyl group, these two would lead to the same product, but due to the symmetry or the lack of symmetry in this molecule, we're going to get three different products as opposed to two. So this is going to be the first one. And here is the second one. And here is the third one. So that's it for this video. So that's the basics of nucleophilic aromatic substitution reactions. So thanks for watching.